Hey guys, this is Mr. Grace for Algebra 2, Unit 6 Review Number 1, Video Number 2. Hey, we already did the first side. Hopefully you watched it. Alright, so we're on the back, and we're still simplifying. Now, what we want to do is to break these down into the three different portions that we see. Okay, now remember that there's a square out here because this is the square root. So the square root of 121, it's actually one of the perfect squares, in case you didn't know. Uh, that is 11. And now the rest of these, we divide the exponents. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. And then 20 divided by 2 is 10. So we get our final answer of 11 uh, x to the 6th, y to the 10th. Number 15. Okay. Look at each portion. Okay. Now, we talked about in class how you can kind of break it down for each portion if you want to. to better see and to better solve everything, but in reality, we're still doing the same thing. Okay, so the cubed root of 27 is three. So we have our three, and now x to the fifth, remember that we kind of divide them, and when you divide three into five, it only goes in once, and there is a remainder of two. So we know that we're going to have an x out here, but then we're also going to have an x underneath the square root, and we're actually or the cubed root, and we're going to have two. Okay, and now we're going to divide twelve divided by three. We get four. So our final answer is three x y to the fourth, and then the cubed root of x squared. It's all about staying organized when we're working with these types of problems. Okay? So, this portion right here, okay? Oh, you never see Mr. Guy's shoe screen. Uh, this is going to stay out front, okay? I'm not going to do anything with it yet because I have to break down each part. Okay, so when I'm doing that, I have the cubed root of 54, the cubed root of x to the 12th, and the cubed root of y to the 10th. Okay, I'm just going to leave this guy alone right now. Now, 54, well, hey, look, what do you know? The cubed root, it actually breaks down to 27. So when I break that down, it's the cubed root of 27, and 27 goes in there two times. Cubed root of 27 is 3, and then this is going to be my remainder, okay? 12 divided by 3 actually is x to the fourth, okay? So he's going to come down here. Now, I'm going to show you another way to do this. This is the way I taught you in the video. We know that 10 cannot be divided by 3, but my next number can, 9. So y to the ninth, and then I would have 1 left over, okay? 9 divided by 3 is 3, and then this is my remainder, okay? So my remainder is what goes inside, and now I'm going to multiply that with 3x squared y. 3 times 3, so the parts that I'm multiplying, the green part with the blue part. 
3 times 3, we get 9. X, 2 plus 4 is 6. Y, I have 1 plus 3, which is 4. And then my remainder, sorry, that should have been cubed, 2Y. Okay, so it's all about staying organized. Don't lose your information. Okay, number 17. We multiply because these are the same. These are both cubed. So I have the cubed root. 4 times 6 is 24. X and Y. 4 plus 9 is 13. 7 plus 1 is 8. I want to break down each part of these. So I got 1, 2, 3. So we have uh, 24. You should be coming back here. And that is 8. So 8 goes into 24 three times. And so we get 2 and the cubed root of 3. 13 and 3. 13 is not divided by 3, but 12 is. And it's going to have one remainder because 12 plus 1 is 13. And then for the y's, 8 is not divided by 3. 7 is not divided by 3, but 6 is divided by 3. And then we would have 2 left over. Okay? So this turn 12 divided by 3, we're going to go with the x's. Sorry, I kind of got distracted breaking everything down. We have 12 divided by 3 is 4 with 1 left over. 6 divided by 3 is 2 with 2 left over. So then our final answer of 2x to the 4th, y squared, and the cubed root of 3 x y squared. If you want to give that x inside a 1, you are more than welcome to. Okay, and then number 5. Number 5, I look at these differently. Okay, I'm going to do this first part. We had the 5 out front. And then I need to break down the cube root of 16, which is 8 and 2. The cubed root of 8 is 2. And 5 times 2 is 10. And I'm going to subtract that with the 128. So 128, 64 goes into it. This is why it's so good to know these guys. 64 goes into 128 two times. The cubed root of 64 is 4. And I'm just going to bring it down. The last part, I have to subtract 10 minus 4. And 10 minus 4 gives us 6. And then the cubed root 2 is kind of like our exponent. Or not our exponent, our variable that's just kind of hanging out there. Okay, number 19. It's asking us to sketch uh, a graph and determine the domain and range of the function. So we need to see first off that this is a square root. I need to know my initial point of negative 2 and positive 4 because it's opposite and then it stays the same. So I go negative 2, 4. It's positive, so I go up one, right one, up two, right four. Okay, so if you need that pattern again, up one, right one, up 
to write for, okay? Our domain, the x values is from negative two to infinity because it's, it's as far left as we go. And then our range is from positive four to positive infinity. Okay, so it's always important to look at your x or your root to see what it is. Okay, so I look at my vertex, the initial point, negative one, negative three. That's where we start. Negative one, negative three. I go up one, right one, up to right eight and then down one left one down two left eight and there we go my domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity and my range is negative infinity to positive infinity. So the key thing for this is knowing the pattern, okay? So once again, the pattern, up one, right one, up two, right eight, and then I go down one, left one, down two, left eight. Okay. So now we have to solve the equation and don't forget to check for extraneous solutions. Whatever's inside, I see that they're by themselves. So I square them. I'm just gonna write it over here so I have more room. 4x minus 11 and 2x plus 9. I want to solve that. I'm following the rules of SADMAP, so I'm going to subtract 2x to both sides to get 2x minus 11 equals 9. Add the 11 to both sides to get 2x equals 20. Divide by 2 and we get that x equals 10. And don't forget, you have to check it, okay? 4 times 10 minus 11, which is 40 minus 11, which is 29, right? And then the other side, 2 times 10 plus 9, which is 20 plus nine, which is 29. So yay, it works. X equals 10 is our answer. Number 22, I'm gonna zoom in because everybody loves this one and it's just a little bit more work, okay? So same thing as before, okay? I'm going to square everything but when I square x plus 3 times x plus 3, it's x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. But we have to combine those to get x squared plus 6x plus 9. And then I want to get everything to the left side. So we get x squared minus 3x minus 4 equaling 0. So what numbers multiply to get to negative 4 and add to get to negative 3? It's 1 and 4, but the 4 is negative. So x plus 1 
x minus 4 equals 0. And when you solve those, you get negative 1 and positive 4. So you guys are in charge of doing the check by yourself. Remember, you have to check both of them. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and good luck. Okay, so you get both of them. Yes, that's right. Both of them actually work. So we get negative one and four as our two answers. Okay. All right. Number 23. For number 23, we have to rewrite this. So we get the fourth root of x minus 7 plus 1 equals 7. And I want to get the root by itself. So to get the root by itself, I have to subtract 1 to both sides. To get 6, divide by 3, because it's not by itself yet. And then to get the root by itself, I have to take it to the fourth power. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 gives us 16. And then add the 7 to the other side to get 23. So once again, I don't know if that works or not. It's all up to you. Make sure to check. So it's 3 to the fourth power, or to the fourth root of 23 minus 7 plus 1 equals 7. Go ahead and pause the video and good luck. Okay, and that worked. We got x equals 23. All right, last one. Now the nice thing about this one is that the square root's already solved for us, so we just have to do inverse operations, okay? So we add the 5 to both sides. 7 plus 5 is 12. The root's not by itself. So I have to divide by 3. And when I divide by 3, we get 4. OK? To get the root by itself, or to get what's underneath the root by itself, I have to square both sides. So we get x plus 6, and 4 squared is 16. Subtract the 6 to both sides to get that x equals 10. Okay? So go ahead. Once again, you guys are doing the check by yourself. Remember, we're checking to see if there's an extraneous solution or not. Good luck. Okay, and then we finally get that it works out. So x equals 10, and I was able to finish this off before my next class started. So if you have any questions, please come see Ms. Kranz or myself. Otherwise, this is Mr. Grice signing off for Algebra 2 Unit 6 Review number 1. Thanks for watching.